All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this Acer Aspire 5. This is a model N19H2, although the actual model number's over here, it's A514-52K-3472. All right, so I believe this has a bad hard drive. So we're basically going to be replacing the drive with an SSD, okay? It's been just like not doing anything. It'll just get stuck at the boot BIOS menu. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and take the screws out. We're going to be using a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. You wanna keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. So we got pretty much four here, I believe three. If There's probably one under there. And then we got three more down here. So let's go ahead and remove these screws. All right, if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Uh, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot. If you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well, because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Uh, I also have another channel called It's Been Reviewed and More. Pretty much the same profile picture but zoomed in <clears throat> all right if you could subscribe to that channel as well i gotta get that one to a thousand all right anyways uh the screws down here are smaller than the other ones so if you happen to mix them up keep that in mind all right uh this one screw for some reason isn't oh, okay i was like why isn't it coming out i had to use a magnet <laughs> all right so i used the magnet to get that screw out and then there's this one under the warranty void sticker. Let me see if I can carefully somehow get that sticker off. Um, most likely, you're gonna end up just peeling it off anyway. So I'm gonna use this plastic uh, pry tool, and, or not pry tool, razor blade, and see if I can cleanly. Eh, I tore it. Okay. Well, I almost got it, and then it tore right at the end. I probably should have been a little more patient, but I mean, this laptop is so old, there's no warranty. <laughs> but I was just doing it just to do it. Okay, anyways, we'll toss that. <clears throat> and we'll get this screw out. Let's see, is this screw different from the rest? Looks to be about the same as all the other ones, except for these front short ones. All right, so let's go ahead and get the bottom cover off. Usually the, w <laughs> Usually the way I do this is I get my fingernails in the gap here, and then I'll uh, push with my thumb on the palm rest. Let's see if that works for this model. Okay, it works better if you have two hands. There we go. You can hear the case separating. Yep, all right, so this technique works. And then you go down the sides as well. Don't push on the keyboard. You don't wanna end up um, popping the keys out or anything like that. All right, so now we're gonna be pulling the cover open and I just slide my fingernail across. Obviously you can use pry tools if you want. All right, and there we go. Just going off the sides. We didn't have to pry anything back here. And there you go. The bottom cover is off. Okay, so, oh, there's actually an SSD in here, an M.2 SSD as well, 256 gigs. Um, my guess is the main hard drive is dead, but if the SSD is also dead, then I guess we'll find out. I didn't realize it had two drives in here. I guess I'll do a close up to let you guys see, but let's get a thumbnail real quick. Okay, so I'll get a thumbnail there. All right, so I'm gonna show you close up. You got a two and a half inch SATA hard drive here. You can upgrade that to an SSD, obviously. Um, you have the wireless card here, okay. Um, CPU soldered to the motherboard. There's one slot to add RAM, but there's no additional, I mean, the other RAM is soldered to the board somewhere. All right, um, it looks like some, they reused this design for ones with a dedicated GPU, but as you can see, there's nothing there. LCD LVDS connector. If you're gonna mess with this, you wanna disconnect the battery connector here first, open the laptop, and then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds before messing with this, or you can short the pins here, trying to get it out if it goes slightly crooked, or sometimes it'll just arc across like trying to, uh, because of the high voltage. So you wanna be very careful. Make sure to drain the power first, okay? Now we're gonna look at the other stuff. This looks like a CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery. I've never seen them do it this way where there's this weird foam thing on top. Um, you got an M.2 
is this a PCIe? Does it say on here? Yeah. So there's a PCIe NVMe SSD. All right. So you can upgrade to another M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. There are no capacity limits. Some people ask, like, what's the largest one you can get? Whatever they sell. I think it's four terabytes or maybe eight terabytes. All right. This is marked with a FP fingerprint. Most likely that's fingerprint reader. There's this little button here that you can actually press through the bottom case. That's kind of like a battery reset. If for some reason it's having issues powering up, you can try using a pin and pushing that for about 15 seconds. All right, battery connectors here. If you want to remove it, you grab the wings and wiggle and it'll pull out. Um, these connectors, they have a little flip latch. I'm not going to pull these things out because the only thing we need to check is the hard drive and the SSD. Uh, keyboard connectors here. The flip latch is on this side, but you pull the connector that way. This looks like for a keyboard backlight for models that have that, but this one doesn't. Okay, they got some tape here, which I'm not sure why. It looks like it's just on top of the fan connector here. Maybe they don't want the extra um, slack going around. The wireless antennas, if you want to remove them, you go from the tail and just pull straight up. All right, the gray one is for the auxiliary, and then the black one's for the main. You have this uh, flat ribbon cable, flex cable, whatever you want to call it, for the USB and audio jack. All right, and then also for the speaker connection here. Uh, the battery model, if you need it, is right there, um, AP18C8K. Hopefully my camera's not actually like all glitchy and jittery because for some reason it looks really slow in the camera. Oh, it looks like part of the plastic for this screw thing was broken. I was wondering why when I looked in there, it looked like the screw was kind of, you can see, not really connecting properly. I don't know if I can glue this back on. I'll try just because, I mean, at least part of it we need to get back on there so the screw can kind of sit in. So I'm gonna try and glue this real quick. Okay, I believe I showed all the components inside that we're gonna look at, so if that's all you wanted to see, then you can skip over. I'm gonna try disconnecting the hard drive and see if it will boot up without having to redo the um, Windows install and everything, because then that'll be a lot easier. And then I didn't have to actually buy a new SSD. I didn't know it had an M.2 slot, so I actually bought a, M, like a SATA SSD. Um, and they said they don't really use it for much, just like browsing the internet. So they only needed a small 240 gig SSD. So the SSD that's in there, again, is 256 gigs. So if it works, then that'll be good. All right, so I'm just holding this a few seconds. Um, I don't think I can reattach these tiny bits of plastic. Um, and I'm worried that if it breaks off again, it'll start rolling around in the computer. So we're just going to toss these. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Anyways, let's go ahead and try removing the hard drive here. The SSD, it's a very common design. The hard drive is a little bit weird because it's trapped by this stuff. It looks like we need to switch to a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. There are two screws. So we'll remove both of those. Okay. That one and that one. It actually had some red uh, thread locker or yeah, thread locker. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, actually there's four screws. Don't forget to remove these as well. We might have to disconnect this cable or at least one side to lift it out of the way. Um, but yeah. Right. Oh, one other thing. There's this little uh, connector here. That's for the hard drive. It says HDD. All right. So that means this is probably just loose. Yep. Right, so I'm going to grab in here and disconnect that. I'm going to get my fingernails in there and see if I can disconnect that. Maybe not. I don't know. All right. Well, I guess let's flip this latch up. And then let's disconnect this cable. And now we can lift this up. And we got to be careful because, again, that cable is there. Oh, they have some tape here. So we got to be careful and peel that up as well. So that tape is holding the wireless antennas down. So you want to be very careful. I'm probably going to, let's try using this to get it off. I'm trying to cut under the adhesive using this plastic razor blade. Okay, there we go. We can hold that adhesive out of the way. And now we can kind of lift this. Again, I'm going to try and pry this out. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're going to try and disconnect that. Let's go ahead and reconnect the USB audio jack board. All right, <clears throat> and I'm going to clean the dust off of this, and then I'll be back. I mean, for you, it's, well, 
I guess I'll just leave the recording going. You can hear me brushing the dust off into the trash can next to me. Okay. Just want to clean it up a little bit because it's pretty dusty inside. Towards the hinge and on the heat sink. I don't know why there's so much dust there and a little bit on the speakers. Okay. All right. I think that's good. Actually, let's go ahead and do the fan a little bit as well. Okay, now I need to bring this to the trash can and get it out. Use my little air blowing duster thing to try and clean it better. Okay, there we go. Sorry for all that. All right, anyways. Now let's go ahead and see if this computer works okay, if it boots up normally now that we took out the hard drive, which I'm assuming that was a defective component, but it could be, excuse me, it could be the M.2 SSD that was the defective component. So let's power it up. I don't know if it has, okay, it does have battery. Let's see, is it actually going to boot? Oh, it's actually booting. So... I think all I needed to do was remove the regular hard drive. Really? Really? I didn't have to wait for the SSD to arrive? <laughs> it's, it's starting up. It's starting up normally. So this hard drive was the problem. It was causing all the issues. And all I had to do was pull the SSD out. So I guess I can let the customer know, actually. I wasted all that time waiting for the replacement <laughs> okay um yeah i guess let's go ahead and put this thing back together also they had this little usb in there they were using the wrong side this one's usb 2 there's a little usb 2 adapter these are usb 3 so it's kind of a waste to put a usb 2 thing in there anyways let me actually shut it down completely so power's not running through it <sighs> did i shut it down <laughs> it, it turned off okay Let's go ahead and put the screws back in. I guess I can let the customer know there's really no point of me putting the SSD in there now. So, yeah. I don't know. Did I open that box? No, I, I don't think I opened it. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't open it. So, I can just return it. We should be good. The only thing is now if I want to store these screws back in there, so these um, hard drive screws, oops, I'm gonna switch back to the PH1, JS1, um, that hold the bracket, all right? I'm gonna remove the four screws here, and then I'm gonna just wrap it up in some tape and then store it inside the computer. That way, if they ever, for some reason, need the um, screws or wanna put a new hard drive, a two and a half inch SATA, then they have that ability. Um, it doesn't sound like they're gonna want to do that, um, this computer seems more like something they're like, well, all I need it is for some very basic needs. So they're probably going to end up just getting rid of it if it dies or if they need to replace again. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this thing back in there. You can see I can slide this in without having to take everything out. Okay, then we're going to switch back over to the PH0, JS0 screwdriver. So I can put the hard drive bracket screws back in. Okay, just like this, and then I'm going to wrap the screws in some tape and store it inside here. Okay, so, yeah, um, that's pretty cool. I thought this was like a very low-end uh, model. I didn't know they would have that stuff. Um, usually these lower-end models don't have multiple hard drive or SSD ports, so pretty cool that they included that in this very low-end model. Okay. I'm going to get some tape now, and then we're just going to tape up the screws so that they can have them in there. Again, I'm pretty sure they're probably not going to use them ever, but might as well, just in case, or whoever ends up with this if it gets recycled. Okay, so here's a piece of tape. Usually what I do is I'll fold it over twice, okay, like this. This gives me like a release tab. I'm going to just stick the screws on here. And then basically I'll just fold it on itself so it's like a little pouch. Um, but I'll fold it a little bit further past so that way it can have like um, a sticky tab. So you fold it like this, okay, in half. 
and you leave a little bit over here. Okay, so now it's taped in on all sides, all around, like a little pocket. And then this part is sticky, and now we can just stick that down there, and that's not going to come off, and we should be good. And then if they ever need it, they can peel that off, open it up, and yeah. All right, so that turned out being pretty simple repair. Um, I didn't need to wait for the replacement drive. Now I just have that SSD for no reason. <laughs> but yeah, luckily Amazon has good returns, so I'll just return it, say I don't need it, ordered by accident or whatever, because yeah, I accidentally ordered it. I didn't know I didn't need it. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and pop this stuff back in. So what you do is you kind of push inwards as you're pushing down, okay? Same thing over here. Push inwards as you're pushing down, and that will pop everything in. All right, now everything looks good. We just gotta get the um, all the screws back in, and we're good to go. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Again, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. And yeah, I also have another channel, again, called It's Been Reviewed and More. So if you want to see random reviews of random stuff, maybe you'll find some products you're curious about. Uh, most of them are stuff I got from Costco, but not all of it. Um, sometimes I'll get stuff from other places, and I'll review those as well. But, yeah. All right. That's pretty much it. We're just going to get all these screws back in. I'm going to make sure it powers on one more time, but I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. And, yeah. That's all there is to it. All right. Last few screws. If I checked that earlier, I could have got the computer back to the customer the like, same day. I didn't realize that it had multiple drives, and I didn't think that the one that was failing would cause the computer to not boot up. So, anyways, again, let's power it up one last time. If it spins around the Windows thing, then we should be good. And that reduces the cost of the repair a lot for this customer. So, yep, it looks good. All right, that's it. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye.